We have Jeff Wilson, author of the Manhattan Project of 2009, Energy Independence Now, and How Much Energy Does My Car Use? What do you think will be the outcome or what, what, what will be the landscape of the auto industry five years from now? Five years from now, the auto industry will be in the middle of a very major change. It'll be just about that time that the world at large and the auto industry in particular realizes that we're going to be making a big transition off of gasoline-powered cars and onto electric-powered cars. Um, who do you think will be the uh, companies that's going to be standing at that time? Well, you know, I believe that um, the the big three, I think, are going to continue to shrink in mm. size. Uh, GM does stand a chance of getting a foothold in this new industry uh, with their uh, Chevy Volt that will be coming out in 2010. It will actually be the first mass-produced plug-in electric car uh, on the planet that we're aware of. Uh, Mitsubishi will be coming out with their mass-produced electric car in 2011. Toyota and Nissan will have theirs out in 2012. The other thing to keep an eye open for is that this is one of those transitional moments in a big industry where a few small players will come out of nowhere and will be the big car companies 50 years from now. And I'm betting money on uh, Tesla, at least, and uh, possibly uh, Fisker or Phoenix. Why, why those companies in particular? Uh, Tesla... Tesla, in particular, is way out ahead on electric car development. And, they're, in fact, they've, they've been shipping a car for about six months now. It's being very well received. It appears to be very well designed. And of particular note, they're being financed by the venture capital firm Perker, Perkins Kleiner, which is very big. You can bet the bank on anything they invest in. And... They're being invested in by Google. Google is standing behind this company very much. So their their first car is a two-seater sports car that sells for about $120,000, but their ambitious goals are a second-generation car for about $60,000 and then a third-generation car that will be in the $30,000 or under price range. So we're talking about third-generation car that will be a popularly priced plug-in electric car and their ambitious goal is to have that out on the market in about four years. And the two cars? The, the two other car two? Company? Uh, the other two companies, uh, mm -hmm. Fisker, which is coming out with a, um, a uh, luxury uh, four-door sedan in the year 2009. And that one is a hybrid, plug-in hybrid. It'll go up about 50 miles on a charge and then switch over to a gasoline engine. The other company that I think is very interesting is uh, Phoenix Motor Cars. And uh, the thing about their car is that they use a battery from a company called Altair Nano. And the Altair Nano battery is unusual in that it can be charged very quickly. The first generation car that's to be shipping this year is, goes 130 miles on a charge. But their second generation car, which is due out in 2010, will go 250 miles on a charge, but here's the kicker. It can be charged in 10 minutes. So we're talking about an electric car that could be practical for long-distance travel. You drive 250 miles, stop for 10 minutes and charge it, drive another 250 miles. Well, that's amazing. Yeah. That's I, amazing. It, it is. The, the, the electric car uh, technology development is moving very quickly now. So even though the first few cars will be more expensive than we like and won't go as far on a charge as we like, uh, it's developing very quickly. And, and in the next four or five years, consumer preferences, I think, will have them head-to-head -head with gasoline-powered cars, with the exception being that gasoline cars will still be expensive to run. But an electric car, the cost of running an electric car is the equivalent of running a gasoline car on 60 cent a gallon gasoline. What will car buyers buy more of, electric, hybrid, or fuel efficient automobiles? It, it will be a transition. And here's what I think is that the uh, people who 
uh, live in urban areas and have short commuting distances will be the first adopters of all electric cars. People who want to get into an electric car but, but need the flexibility of, of longer distance will get a hybrid like the Chevy Volt, which will run 40 miles on a charge. But if you need to go further, we'll switch over to the gasoline engine. And I think that a lot of two-car families will get a, a plug-in electric car, and they will use that for most of their daily chores. But when they need the car that will go a long distance or the car that will tow a boat, they'll pull the gasoline car out of the garage and use it. Uh, in five to ten years, uh, all of the advantages of the, of the gasoline motor over an electric motor will be gone. And I think at that point, people in mass will be buying electric cars. Right now, what can, what do you see is the potentially that can save the the automakers right uh, with, with the current situation? What they have to do most immediately is to turn out fuel efficient gasoline cars right this moment. You know, people right after Hurricane Katrina, you remember gasoline bumped up to three dollars a gallon for the first time. People were all in a panic. And then it backed off from $3, and people decided that the gas price crisis was over. They ran out and bought a whole bunch of trucks and SUVs. And now, two or three years later, after gas bumped up to $4 a gallon, they're trying to dump them and get a more fuel-efficient car. I have a friend that works at a car dealer. He has people bringing in SUVs that they bought two years ago and he's only allowed to offer them about half of what they still owe on it. And uh, I think that's such a painful experience that a lot of people aren't going to forget it this time. Where do you see the price of oil and gas in, in about five years, in your opinion? Um, I, we, we have hit the base price now. Uh, you, you know, when the oil hit 130, 140 a barrel, the Saudi oil minister said that the real price should be about 80 bucks and that all the additional price was due to speculation. Now that we've blown all the speculators out of the market, we see that that was, was just about right. If you factor in the fact that uh, oil consumption has decreased a slight bit and the dollars become stronger, um, the, the price we see now is, is close to what he, he was predicting it would be. On the other hand, though, even though it seems low to us now, it's still three times what it was just six years ago. It's still five times what it was just ten years ago. And from this point, it will keep slowly edging up. My best guess is that we'll average about a 75 cent a year increase in gas from here on out. Okay. That's Jeff Wilson, the author of Manhattan Project of 2009, Energy Independence Now, and how much... Energy does my car use? 